What's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 1980 Toyota Dolphin 300T. Up front is a 2.2 liter inline four. Down below is a four speed manual transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this Dolphin for many reasons, but it's a retro camper. It's got three axles and it's incredibly cool and incredibly strange. So I'm excited to share that with you today. But if you would like to share your incredibly cool and strange vehicle with me, you can head on over to my website, zachpradle.com slash submit. It's a quick and easy submission form and I come out to you to film your car. So let's get back to that four cylinder under the hood. Well, like I said, it's a 2.2 liter and it doesn't make a whole lot of horsepower. I don't normally talk about zero to 60 time of vehicles, but this camper is laughably slow at 26 seconds, zero to 60. Not quite Lightning McQueen, but we'll get there one day. However, Toyota's engines, their four cylinders specifically in this era are incredibly reliable and incredibly stout. This truck sat for years and years and years and all the owner did was an oil change and some fresh gas and it fired right up. It is carbureted so when the camper sits for a while, which most campers do, it's a little annoying to start after sitting for so long, but you'll get there. Like I said, paired to it is a four speed manual. Now a five speed would be nice, but it didn't come with one. And it's just weird to be driving a camper that is a manual transmission as it is. So definitely strange in my book. Last but not least, I guess you would consider this middle wheel drive. So it has three axles. Obviously the front steer axle. Then there's the drive axle, which is actually in the middle. This is known as the death axle because it's one rim with two tires on it. And when the added stress of a camper was applied to it, if you overloaded your camper, sometimes this would cause stress fractures within the wheel and on the studs. And so you'll be cruising down the highway and you'll look off to the right and see your wheel careening into the forest. That was an issue on earlier campers as well. So they added a floating axle, that's that third axle at the very back, that isn't connected to the drive wheels at all and is just there for when there is added weight. It sort of takes the load off of that death axle. Kind of an interesting piece of history and the death axle was actually recalled in the early 1990s. So how does it feel to actually drive the Dolphin? Kind of a funny thing to say. It drives really well. The shifter feels great. Steering feels great. I don't have any qualms or issues with it. I actually quite enjoy this driving experience. You just have a giant back behind you. And because there is an open passage between the front cab and the rear, I get all the sounds, every little creak and crunch I hear right in my right ear. So it's a little unnerving to someone who might not have driven one of these before, but you get used to it and it actually handles the highway pretty well. With that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have two main gauges. Off to the left is my coolant temperature, fuel and warning lights. And off to the right, I have my speedometer as well as in the center, I get a really vintage Toyota logo. I absolutely love seeing that. On the steering wheel, I just have two buttons for the horn and I have my little hazard switch on the steering column, but that's it. Off to the left, I have my light settings, a vent, and my little label for unleaded only. And moving out of the door, we have the latch get in and out and the crank for the windows. Moving into the center, we have our climate control options. This was optioned with AC. Down below that, we have an ashtray. And off to the right, we have a radio. Now, it says on here that you can access F FM, AM and FM. However, down below there's this little filler panel that if you pull it off, there are sections for tuning and volume. I don't know why this would have been and the owner doesn't really know why because if it's an FM radio, that wasn't an optional FM radio or maybe it was an optional FM radio. I'm not quite sure, neither is the owner, so we'll leave it at that. Then I have added vents. This is for the air conditioning and the owner added an airlift system for the rear suspension to help level out the RV. Then we have the shifter, four speed, feels great, looks great, does the part and does the job. And then moving into the center, we do get a little center console. So we will do a cup holder test with the big friggin' bottle. And unfortunately it fails. <laughs> Now the seats are covered in seat covers, obviously, but they are pretty comfortable and cushy and bouncy, which helps out for the lack of cushy suspension. However, let's get on to the part that everyone wants to see, and that's the back. All right, so we're gonna take a look at the back of the camper, but just something to preface is that Steve legitimately still uses this as a camper, and so he has redone the inside. 
So unfortunately for like aesthetics and stuff, this isn't going to be the original interior, but I figured I'd still walk you through it. So coming in here, this is the interior of the Dolphin. Pull that closed behind us. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen. So let's start off back here. First of all, we do have a propane stove, kitchen sink, and some cabinets up above. In here is the bathroom. Little tiny guy, but definitely a bathroom that works nevertheless. That has not really been renovated. Moving over here, we do have some countertop space and what would be a fridge down here. However, the owner put an AC unit instead, which, you know what, I don't really blame him. Moving up here, we do have a bench, which is really, really nice. Under here, you'll get the RV's batteries. And there is a solar panel up on the roof, which powers those batteries. And over here, we have two captain's chairs. They are on swivels, so you can swivel and sit at the desk, or you can face this way. Moving up here, we do have the bed. So... You can pull this back and there's this board here to support this. You can push that back and then you have tons of access to the cab itself or you can make this into a bed which let's be honest that's the better way to do it. Speaking of the bed just past it we do get our front window which looks amazing. Really really cool and I love that view here in the RV. Of course he has added some niceties like I said he does still camp in this but this is just an amazing space and I absolutely love it. Now we gotta talk about the looks and the outside looks a lot more tired than the inside, but I like that. I love how 80s this is. You know, everyone always associates the 80s with like neon colors and synth music, but that's the later 80s. That's 86, 87, 88, and 89. This is the brown era of the 80s. This is when everything was brown. And this was really a product of the late 70s. It's still carbureted and just brown on brown on brown on brown. I mean, it, it's so much brown. I might call Roto-Rooter in a second here, but I love it. I love that aesthetic of it. And that to me is really, really sweet. But now let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think driving a 1980 Toyota Dolphin 300T. Well, I think it's incredibly cool. And I just love this camper. And the cool thing about this camper review is that I was actually given the opportunity to ride around in the back for a little bit. And I got to imagine what a road trip from the back of this camper would have been like. Seeing the passing trees and houses and wondering where we are. My favorite thing is looking out over the bed at the front windows and looking at traffic. It's such an interesting perspective that you don't really get in other cars because there's people's heads in the way. You never get to be at the front without driving. Here, you can lay down and enjoy the view, whether that be these stoplights and traffic that you see now, or maybe it would be Badlands National Park. Maybe it would be Mount Evans in Colorado. Maybe it would be Mount Rainier out in Washington, or maybe even Acadia up in Maine. I love putting myself in the shoes of someone who might have grown up with one of these and looked out those windows and seen views for the first time, seen our beautiful country for the first time out of there. This camper was not only decently affordable, at least in terms of the camper market, but also friendly for anyone to drive that isn't used to driving a Mack truck. This camper isn't aggressive. It's not daunting. It's not intimidating. It's your little travel buddy. It's your home on wheels. It's not huge. There's no foyer or library, but it's just enough to live comfortably and see what our world has to offer. That to me is so incredibly special. What a cool camper this thing is. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed this little tour of this beautiful truck. Huge thank you to Steve for letting me take out his Dolphin. Such an interesting and unique camper. I'm not sure I'll ever drive one again, but if you have a camper you would like to share with me, please leave it in the comments or submit it to my website. But thank you to Steve. I've reviewed a bunch of his vehicle. He's a great friend of the channel and I cannot thank him enough. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.